Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And today, for Feminists Around the World, we are going down a different route. We are doing the sports ball thing. <laughs> I'm being facetious, y'all. I know many film people love sports. I'm just not one of those people, so I'm making fun of myself when I say this. But we're talking about a Korean basketball player that I stumbled upon, yes, thanks to TikTok. Um, and it's from Next Shark is the site. I don't follow them, but it popped up. I was like, look at this. I've gotten a lot of uh, Korean soccer coming at my way, mm. and I've been very happy about it. Yeah. Uh, so I think this is why I got this as well. But this player is actually from South Korea, but played in the U.S. And we're talking about Eun Jung Lee Ok, or E J Ok, as everybody else calls her. And many also refer to her, including the Sports Illustrated at the time, as the Korean Magic Johnson. She was so good. And Annie, just sit back, because I'm going to tell you all about her. Okay. Because I found it fascinating. And also, it's hard to translate what I found on TikTok onto writing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as we do. Because, you know, it's a little different, the video uh, version versus us talking about it on audio version. I guess because mm-hmm. you get to see all the highlights and the scripts that write through it. Right. But, yes. Yeah, so, Next Shark did feature her as one of the probably best uh, female basketball players ever that not many people know about. And the fact that she's Korean, she was like 5'6 at the time, so I was a little bit taller than me, but whatever. <laughs> and she came into the U.S. in the 1980s. Again, I was really shocked. I was like, really? Like, Korean people have been infiltrating a lot of American sports, and I love to see it. Uh, and just like European sports in itself. And it's been fascinating to see who those who have actually been able to cross over into Western fame. But she is one of those. And especially as a woman in basketball, I was like, what? So, of course, <laughs> I had to go down this route. So, she's originally from Gimji, South Korea. And E.J. Ok started playing basketball around the age of 10 in the fifth grade. And her mother would actually sneak her to practices after realizing how good she was and was telling her father, who didn't approve of women in sports, very old school, that she was going to piano lessons. Mm. And she was so good. She and her high school team, when she was a senior, was featured on national television where her father watched her for the first time and actually admitted, like, yeah, okay, you're good. And I could (laughs) see this, like, just the Korean, like, mm. Okay, mm-hmm. I get it. Like, that's that level. And knowing that she's actually really good at something like this. And again, she was so good that she and her team were flown to the U.S. to do exhibition games in both L.A. and Jacksonville, Florida. Which, why does Jacksonville get these random <laughs> things like this? I'm like, that's such an odd place to be. Mm-hmm. I don't even, does Florida have a, I'm saying this, does Florida have a basketball team? <laughs> like an actual men's team? They do. <laughs> a, like, a, like, like a like of course the colleges have different teams, so I'm not like making mm-hmm. fun of that. But like, you know, Atlanta Hawks, we have that. Like, like the national teams, they go different places. They don't even have so I'm really kind of like, wait, what? To be fair, she was in high schools, but that level of like, huh, well, that's an interesting place to have that. Okay. But she went to Jacksonville, Florida. I wonder what she thought of that in the 1980s. <laughs> anyway. And because of her reputation, she was soon picked up by Northeast Louisiana University, where she garnered even more attention for her skills and abilities. Um, It was also noted in the Next Shark video that she had a very specific move, which was like the shot fake behind the back pass. And they even mentioned saying that many other people felt that Michael Jordan and Larry Bird were, was influenced by that because they used that shot as well. That was part of their their signature as well. So I'm like, oh, interesting. Yeah. This, Kore- this little Korean lady influenced <laughs> Michael Jordan and Larry Bird, who I knew. They were my time, time frame. Of course, everybody knows who Michael Jordan is, but you know what I mean. And Larry Bird. <laughs> but anyway, um, but her playing was incredible and so well known throughout the States. Um, and here's some quotes from a 2014 article from charactermedia.com. EJ is the best female point guard I've I've ever seen, said Brown, who coached Shaquille O'Neal at LSU in the early 90s. I don't mean to embellish this, but she's a female Pete Maravich. They had eyes all around their head. Great players perceive things that aren't there. They diagram plays and know it in their heads and make that pass two seconds later. She was a phenom, I tell you. She had it all. 
A Niles is kind of one of the many players who talked about it. Um, and then it talks about specific games that she played. It says, with three hours to go before tip off, the line outside Ewing Coliseum on the campus of Northeast Louisiana University circled around the arena. An antsy crowd of 7,000 eagerly waited to enter for the biggest and most anticipated game of March Madness basketball in the school's history. The Lady Indians were about to take on their longtime rivals, Louisiana Tech, in the NCAA Midwest Regional Championship game for a berth in the nation's Final Four. As the game got underway, a fervent chance of EJ, EJ from the crowd reverberated inside the arena at eardrum-splitting levels as fans showed their appreciation for the NLU's star player, EJ, short for Yoon jung Yi. The junior point guard, who only came to the U.S. from Gimji, South Korea, three years later had earned a special place in the heart of these fans. Every day on campus, EJ was the talk, described Gene Pointy, the radio play-by-play man for NLU's basketball game in the 1980s. The fans couldn't get enough of her. So, like, the team was loved. And apparently before the year, her freshman year that came on, they were, like, their game stats were 12, 12 and 12, so not doing well. And this is the first time they were like, so good that they could make it to the Final Four. I believe a lot of controversy happened where she wasn't able, they weren't able to make it. Something about recruiting, illegal recruiting. But she was so good that everyone had like banners for her, loved her. There was newspaper articles. They knew in Louisiana who she was. And she actually talked about it in the same interview. She says, it was unbelievable, says the star NLU point guard, now 51. So this was 2014. And now EJ Oak, her married name, recalling that momentous game 29 years ago. Everybody was pulling for me. Our fans really loved the way I played basketball. I was always ready to play Louisiana Tech so that I can make our fans happy. When we beat them, it meant so much for them. And apparently after uh, her game, the coach, Louisiana Tech coach, like was like, I'm going to be so happy when you graduate. Like, they actually said that to her face. Like, <laughs> I'm going to be so excited <laughs> when you graduate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, understandably so. Mm-hmm. So she was making huge plays, making huge deals. You can now watch YouTube clips of her playing. And I, I watched a little bit. And I was like, oh, my God, she was so good. She she jumps so well. <laughs> Say this as the person who can't get off the ground. <laughs> like when I see Korean representation, I'm like, yay, good on you. <laughs> and as a fact, uh, there was another article in 2022 from basketballnetwork.net who said the same thing that I did. I'm like, why didn't we know about this person? Uh, they said, Un Jong Yi Ok was truly ahead of her time. There was still no professional league for women after she graduated from the U.S. Uh, she had to go to Sweden and Italy to explore opportunities, and she won MVPs in her stint there. Just imagine the impact she could have had if she had played the era of social media. Oak's story was a perfect recipe for a Netflix docuseries. And yeah, that was kind of the consensus. Like, if social media was around at that time, she would have been on fire, and she would have been so well-known. And she got so many awards, even without social media or any of that uh, fame. Uh, She was the four-time SLC Player of the Year, and she was also the three-time All-American, which apparently no other player today, to this day, has ever uh, gotten that. So even men have not gotten that. Her accolades were pretty big. Those are just two of them. There's so many more she gotten. She was a coach for 30 years, and apparently she's currently a head coach in the Solrall State University for the women's basketball team, even today. So she's still there. She's still doing her thing and apparently using her gift and knowledge in this uh, game that I know very little, very little about. But I know when I'm supposed to be impressed, Annie. <laughs> And impressed you are. <laughs> I am. So good on you, EJ Oak. And thank you for your contribution. Yes, that's such a great story. I hadn't heard of her. Very, very cool. Uh, well, as always, listeners, if you have any more information, any other things in this realm that we should talk about, check out, um, please let us know. You can email us at Stephanie and MomStuff at iHeartMedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at MomStuff Podcast or on Instagram and TikTok at Stuff I Never Told You. We have a tea Public store. And we have a book that you can get wherever you get your books. Thanks, as always, to our super producer, Christina, our executive producer, Maya, and our contributor, Joey. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.